Okay, first of all, you know the, the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has three mandates. One is advocacy, yes. secondly networking, and thirdly uh, trade facilitation. So our advocacy agenda, we um, we have identified two um, advocacy agenda for 2019-2020. Uh, advocacy agenda number one is late payments. And advocacy agenda number two is multiple uh, license regime that is prevailing, especially with devolved government. So focusing on late payments, uh, the Chamber has conducted a research and um, the, re the, the findings of that research are quite um, um, worrying mm -hmm. because uh, we, what we found is that there is an endemic cultural issue in the country today about payments uh, emanating firstly from delayed payments to contractors and service providers by the central government. Yes. Um, this has a knock-on effect because you see the county governments also rely on uh, exchequer release from the central government. So the 15% that goes on to county governments mm -hmm. is many times delayed and has a consequential knock-on effect for delays uh, in payment to service providers and contractors at the county level. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. the, it gets, the plot thickens. I mean, we have also established that now um, large corporates, um, are, including even commercial banks that are in, uh, in profitability, um, are, you know, reneging on their contractual obligations and delaying payments um, to many of their, of their uh, contractual partners. Mm -hmm. So, the, um, the, the consequence of this is that the SMEs that are dependent on these payments, both from the national government, uh, from county governments, and from the large corporates, um, are inconvenienced in the sense that they have um, limited access to credit now because, of course, of the interest rate issue that is a separate discussion. And then now their payments also get uh, delayed. So we have um, um, the last figure that we had was uh, in excess of. 310 billion shillings um, is held up um, for the SME sector by all these parties combined. Mm -hmm. Now, the figure is not stagnant at all. In fact, the national government in the last two, three months yes. has made significant progress in making payments to especially um, con road contractors and the people who are doing civil works across the country, yes. um, as well as in a few other industries. Now, the secondary problem that we face, we are seeing in the, in the county governments, is one where um, county governors are reneging on obligations of predecessors in counties where there was change of guard in the last election. Yes. And I think it's important that, the, that something be done to rein this in. So by way of remedial measures, um, the Chamber of Commerce has proposed a host of, of recommendations um, to remedy this, this problem. The first recommendation that we have made is that it be legislated that any payments mm -hmm. that are done outside the contractual timelines mm -hmm. um, accrue an interest at prevailing bank rate. Okay. The second thing that we are recommending um, is that there should be a reprimand to um, particularly county governments that are not uh, honoring contractual obligations of their predecessors because they need to realize mm -hmm. that these are conti there is continuity. I mean, governments are you know, the entities in law that, that, that are continuing. So whether or not mm -hmm. you have a predecessor you agreed with or didn't agree with, mm -hmm. the, the debt, the, there needs to be transition arrangements so that the carry forward obligations of one regime um, are seized upon by the next regime. So the next regime doesn't come in and start to incur its own liabilities to the exclusion of all those who are providing services and we're in contractual relationship with the previous governments. Mm -hmm. The thing about the Chamber is that we are, represent the broad spectrum of business. Okay. In our membership, we have Safaricom as our platinum members. Mm -hmm. We have Equity Bank, the Cooperative Bank, and the largest corporates in the country, Centum mm -hmm. and the likes. Mm -hmm. We have mid-sized companies in our Chamber membership, including Radio Africa mm -hmm. and the likes. Okay. We have small and micro enterprises in our Chamber. Mm -hmm. including fishmongers on the shores of Lake Victoria. We have um, cobblers, we have juwakari operators, so we cover the broad spectrum mm -hmm. of business. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. and, and we actually, in, our, in my county visits, we always start our, our county forays by visiting the smallest businesses to the largest. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, uh, so in, in Kakamega tomorrow morning I'll be meeting with the border border operators, okay. and then from the border border operators I'll be meeting the sugarcane um, farmers. farmers. Mm -hmm. 
And then later on in the day, we shall be meeting with the corporates for a dinner function. I think we brought it back from the brink. Mm -hmm. the, the, the chamber was virtually dead. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've literally, it is a, it is a new organization. Mm -hmm. We rebranded it, we refocused it, we, we created, we infused governance. We, you know, created relevance in the local business community. We are recognized as the foremost chamber in the continent of Africa and I'm the vice chairman of the World Chamber Federation mm -hmm. representing the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. So in economic diplomacy, I don't think you could find a more active chamber than ourselves. Mm -hmm. and it, over the next three months, for example, I've just come back from South Africa. We have a delegation right now in Mauritius. Uh, next week we have another delegation going to Russia. We have one to, I'm leading uh, my last trade mission to Brazil and uh, Colombia mm -hmm. in June. We have a trade mission coming in from France. We have one to Rwanda next month. So we are globally active. We've signed over 120 MOUs, and, in the, and locally we are very, very actively engaged with uh, the business communities. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is your challenge to those who are in this position? My, my challenge to them is that I think many of them don't know that it's actually a position for service. Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to realize that this is something that you've got to give your life to. I mean, it's not about, uh, it's not about the, the graces that you get with it or the respect that you get or the recognition that you get. It's about service to the business community. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. And I'm really proud that, that we've seen very powerful business personalities mm -hmm. coming in and, and showing an interest. I'm sure you're aware there are people flying all over the country now to try and uh, take over my position. Uh, and I need to remind them that there's no salary for this job as well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well done. Yeah, thanks. Okay.